one of the theories is that the Russian Russian military was using some kind of like sonar wave device that could have pulsed in the area and maybe caused this trauma to those people, freaked everyone out in the tent. They go cutting themselves out of the tent, go running away. Um, or that they might have heard maybe uh, military testing of some kind, missiles testing, thought that it was an avalanche, that scared them and that's why they cut themselves out of the tent. But it's, there's really no hard evidence to, um, to support these theories. What's also difficult about this is this is, of course, during the Cold War era, and um, the USSR is very good about trying to close off access to certain records. A lot of this stuff becomes um, secret records and is not revealed to the public, which also, once again, whips up the conspiracy theories. Uh, why is the government doing that? Are they potentially involved? And that, of course, feeds into the military uh, themed conspiracies quite a bit. There's even a police investigator that has come out, I think it was in the 2000s, possibly the 1990s, um, saying that some of the evidence he was told about, for example, there was another group of campers um, away from this site, but they're saying that they saw glowing orange orbs in the sky and this police investigator was told specifically from his government not to investigate that any further, um, which once again leads you to believe military testing, although some people try to say that the orange orbs might have been some type of extraterrestrial interaction as well. Very, very strange. Um, high winds. Was a member outside um, blown into darkness by a strong wind, which led the others to attempt to rescue that person. Uh, we know that the weather conditions were bad. They were basically stopped on this slopey mountain trail um, by the weather. They had planned on getting over the hill and spending the night on the other side of a mountain, but the weather elements kind of blew them off course. They went a little too far west and all of a sudden found themselves uh, about a mile up on a slope. And that's one of the points that people are discussing as well, is did Igor at that point decide we should just camp here so that he didn't essentially lose any altitude that they had gained um, working their way up to that point, as opposed to them moving down towards where the trees were, which would have been much safer and protected them from any elements and potentially uh, an avalanche situation. Basically, for where they were staying, um, if we go back to this photo, you can see the slope here, and avalanches will typically occur on somewhere between a 30 to 45 degree slope. And just kind of eyeballing, I mean, I'm not positive that, uh, that this is true up, but just eyeballing this, that does appear to me to be very close to that range of 30 to 45 degrees. Avalanche. It is atypical terrain for avalanches, and an avalanche would have untethered the tent. What's really interesting about this story for me is every time I came to the conclusion of avalanches, I heard these excuses that just didn't feel very strong to me about how this couldn't have been an avalanche. I've seen other testimony that says there was, av there was actually avalanche warnings given um, at the base camp area, the last part of known civilization, uh, about this terrain. So this article is kind of disputing that, saying it's atypical terrain for avalanches. Like I just described to you, the slope was there. We know the weather conditions were bad enough that it veered them off course, so they were having trouble with visibility. That tells me that there was probably snowfall. That means you've got a lot of fresh snow laying there, and if they impacted the snowpack at all, I believe it's pretty feasible that they could have had an avalanche. Um, in a lot of this information I've been reviewing, people also seem to assume that there is only one type of avalanche, that video that we've all seen, which is a big giant sheet almost of ice, you know, carving itself out of a mountain as it rolls down, and that is actually not the only type of avalanche. We're going to get to that a bit later. Um, so it's just weird. Every time I, I hit information disputing the avalanche thing, it is, there's a lot of hard, big assumptions in that information, and it's very hard for me to, to get through um, what people are trying to dispute there. Secret weapons testing. 
There was none in the area, apparently. Radioactive dispersal would have affected all of the party members and their equipment. They're stating that because a few of the party members actually had radioactive material found on their clothing. And there are two potential reasons that I have heard for this. Uh, apparently the lanterns that they were using, the wick material that is built into the actual lantern, will disperse some radioactive materials. So it's possible that they might have been exposed to that that way. Also, a few of these students actually dealt with um, radioactive materials at school, so it's possible that their clothes might have been exposed to that previously and they just brought it along the way with them. Um, outside of, these are kind of the most common theories, um, and worth noting, the book that this review is about um, goes into its own theory at the end, Dead Mountain, the untold true story of the Dyatlov Pass <laughs> uh, by Donnie Icar. Uh, basically, his conclusion goes into a theory that we've tapped into just a little bit before on a previous brain scratch. If you've seen the episode about smart meters, you know that we talk about low frequency um, hum at, at one point and there are a couple places in the world that are known to have this low frequency hum and it does seem to affect a certain amount of humans that are exposed to it um, essentially he believes that something along that low frequency hum uh, theory triggered some kind of almost psychotic reaction amongst the travelers and that's why they cut themselves free of the tent and went running out without uh, without having good materials on in terms of keeping themselves protected from the weather. Um, so, but outside of that, we, we get even more kind of strange theories. It was reported that at the funeral for some of the victims, some of them were noticed as having a strange orange tan and even gray hair. People usually couple that up with the radioactive exposure and try to use that as a reasoning for some type of extraterrestrial interference or the military testing radiation poisoning of some kind that, we're, that uh, we were discussing before. I haven't found very good explanations for the orange skin. Um, when you think of a body that has been exposed to frozen elements for the better part of a month, I'm sure the mortuer is doing their best in terms of making that body presentable for um, you know, for display at the wake, which apparently they had some type of open casket because people were able to see this. So it is feasible that the makeup choices by the mortuary uh, just weren't made correctly. Um, the gray hair, I have not seen quite honestly any explanation for. Um, another thing on the orange skin is perhaps that was some type of mummification process um, being exposed to the cold elements that it discolored the skin in some way. But really, the gray hair, um, I can't find any good explanation for. Although, even this testimony that the victims had a strange orange, tan, and gray hair, I can't even really find the source of a good viable source for where that testimony is coming from. I do believe there was a photographer um, that was on site when they were finding these bodies. I think he might have had something to do with this quote, but uh, I've only seen it loosely referred to in one, one place. So this is already kind of subjective and I'm not really sure how much credence to put into it. Um, outside of that, we also get the theory of, as I've just uh, already told you, the Russian Yeti. And here we have some pictures of people going out into the same area and supposedly seeing the Russian Yeti. Um, I get a twinge response of just wanting to disregard this information, particularly because the supporting information I've run into about it sounds exactly like every other Bigfoot story I've ever seen. This footage looks exactly like North American Bigfoot footage that we've seen before. It usually looks like a guy in a Chewbacca outfit. Speaking of which, I've actually played Bigfoot in a television commercial for Old Milwaukee Beer, and that's all they did was dress me up in a Chewbacca outfit, and I'm out of focus in the background just like this. It's extremely easy to recreate images like this. And I've already talked to you about the actual footprints they found. I just, I don't find that, that testimony very compelling. Quite honestly, 
if there were creatures of this nature, where are their bodies? Where are their bones? How come we haven't found any, you know, uh, evidence to support that? I mean, where are they going to the bathroom? A creature that's eight feet tall is leaving it somewhere, and we're not stepping in it somehow. So I'm just, I really have trouble buying that reason, especially with this incident.